Today I was going to go over a very, very important part of airbrushing and that's cleaning your airbrush. Uh, when I first started airbrushing, um, I went to different hobby shops in the area and they would have three brushes for sale and uh, five or six that were damaged. And uh, I went in and asked them if I could fix those airbrushes and they'd give me one. And every single one of the ones that were damaged were just dirty and had not been cleaned or cleaned properly. And then the people couldn't get them to function and then they got frustrated and take them back. So I wanted to go over the basic cleaning instructions and over some of the other basic aspects when you're beginning to kind of give you a heads up on what to look for. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in with cleaning the Omni 3000. That's the brush I did the first video with. And uh, one of the things I like to do is disassemble the brush first, because when you're spraying, the paint, other than what gets on your fingers and on the brush, the paint only travels from the nozzle out the siphon right here. So the paint only travels in this portion of the brush. So one of the things I like to do is use Windex. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by disassembling. We're gonna take off the back piece. Back piece just, unscrews comes right off and then this is the needle chuck right here this holds your needle in place your needle just plugs the hole in the cone in the front so you undo your needle pull it out the back you see it's kind of dirty you can see it's got paint on the end of it there wipe that paint off and there's a little bit back here where the uh the uh, gasket in there is then you can pull the the trigger out then you uh take that that chuck off the back. And then this piece right here is actually your tensioner. It puts tension on the spring that keeps your trigger and needle pushed forward. So you can back that piece out. Once that piece is backed out, you'll see there's your spring right there. And then your uh, guide that goes on the back. This piece sits against the trigger and the needle travels through that piece right there. So I got paint on me already. So the next piece you want to take off is the head assembly or cone assembly. Every different manufacturer has a different name for it. But this piece up front, take the whole thing off and there's your cone. And the cone is a very important piece to keep fresh. Um, they do tend to um, flare out or or a split, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, my brush, because I go through so many different ones, um, I have a different uh, piece on my brush that is made for a quick disconnect from my hose. I'll get into that in a little bit. I'll go ahead and take that piece off too. It just screws right on the bottom. All right, so we're down to the basic airbrush. That's the body of the airbrush, and it's got paint in it right now. And when I'm using water-based paints, I'll use Windex for my cleaning. So you spray it in the hole a little bit, and you can see it start to flush the paint out of there. Well, if I can get my spray to work, there we go. Just flush that paint out of there a little bit. And then I always keep these uh, pipe cleaners. There's different brushes and things that come with some of them. I've always just used pipe cleaners because I use it on all the different aspects, but down inside here, if you look, you can see there's some gunk right down in there. So your airbrush needles also can get bent or things. And whenever I change an airbrush, I always keep the old bent needles just for this purpose. I'll get in here and scrape the edges a little bit, start pulling out some of the gunk. So there's paint that's dried around the inside of the um, siphon hole. And as your bottle goes on and off, that'll break loose and work its way out to the cone. And then you have uh, clogs and whatnot in there. So I just kind of scrape out the big stuff. Then I get in there with my uh, pipe cleaner, but I'll bend that pipe cleaner. So it has a little wider piece on it. Stick it in there and kind of spin it around a few times. See all that gunk coming out of there? You want to clear out the siphon hole here, but this piece down in here where the cone sits runs back to about right in here where there's a there's a little o-ring in there and you can stick the end without the bend on it in there and spin that a few times and really just get that paint to stick to it you can see how much tighter it gets at the back back there so look down in there 
check your airbrush. Sometimes I'll even take the needle and put it through backwards to see if there's any little chunks that come out. So see there's still a lot of paint down in the hole in the back. Just pull that on through and wipe that off with what we have wet here already. And you keep doing that until you don't get any on there. See how much less there is on that go around. Sometimes before you start cleaning it, you might want to just spray water through it or whatever your solvent is that you're using. Uh, when you're using car paints, you're going to use thinner or reducer to uh, do the same thing that the Windex would do here. Car paints wouldn't be affected by it. So that, that's looking pretty clean there. And we'll fold another spot and we'll get down in this area here. Just kind of twist it in there and just kind of rub the sides of it until you look down in there and it looks really clean inside. And then we've got a little bit of paint on the outside edge here. You want to clean all, I always clean the outside, you don't have to. It doesn't affect the performance. But the Windex really breaks that up. Just some type of uh, fluid on there, but there's different cleaners that come with some of these. It works better. Just kind of scrub it up a little bit. And this is a Imagineer paint that I'm using. It's a very durable paint, so even on the metal, it stays on pretty good. You got to scrub it a little bit. If you're using different types of uh, textile paint for t-shirts and stuff, you'll find this to be a lot easier process. And if you're doing car paint, the uh, solvents break it down much faster. So I'm not gonna get too much into cleaning the outside of my brush. Make sure I get my, my needle that's bent. Just kind of scrape off what I can. All right. So there's still some paint on there, but I'm not gonna worry about it for this video. Um, I wanna get through this and show you guys the basics. So our chamber is clean. We've got a, um, uh, sometimes I'll actually blow through it just to get the pieces out, but you gotta cover this hole and this hole and just blow through it. You can see down in there, make sure it all looks clean. Okay, that piece is done. Now the cone. The cone's a very, very small little piece and the cone, uh, as the needle, when you're airbrushing over time, the needle sits right in there at the face of that cone. And from different clogs and things that you can get in there, that cone can split or flare out. And there's all different little problems you can have with that. And uh, I like to clean the cone out as much as I can. Actually, I try to clean the cone all the way out because once you have the paint out of it and you can see down in it, and also, when you're using your Windex, you spray it right in the end of the cone there. So you just want to clean that little piece up. There's a little paint residue on the outside. Clean that little piece up. All right. Now the cone and the needle are the pieces of the airbrush that you might have to replace on occasion. Um, the rest of the airbrush, you just clean it, but the cone and the needle, if the cone gets a little, if the needle gets a little bend on the end or a slight twist on it or something, you're gonna have a hard time spraying a straight line. And if the cone gets damaged, or let me just say when the cone gets damaged, you're gonna have two problems. One problem is it flares out and then you're gonna have to draw the trigger further back to get paint. The other problem is you can get a split right here at the front of the cone and even when you turn the paint off uh, you'll still have a little what we call a trail paint coming out even when you're completely pushed forward so remember if you're having that problem it's most likely the cone another problem that you run into not necessarily with the airbrush but while you're airbrushing you might be spraying and getting a stop and spray and then a stop and spray and a stop and spray. And that actually ends up being a problem with your bottle and not your airbrush. Sometimes if it is the airbrush, this cone doesn't screw in or anything. It just sits in a little seat right there. And sometimes you can get air around that little seat and it'll blow back into the bottle. And you, you see people getting bubbles and things like that that's where the paint is going, or the air is going right back around there and blowing down into the bottle rather than sucking the paint out from the nozzle. What I like to do when I'm on site and I'm airbrushing and I don't have time to mess with it, 
I will take my bottle and make a drop of paint and dip that cone, the back of it, right in the paint just a little bit and I'll stick it in here and it makes a seal. And then you don't get bubbles in your bottle anymore. So the cone is sitting back in place and we'll put the head assembly on. I didn't take it apart to clean it, but if you ever have to clean, there's little holes inside there. I don't know if you can see them in there, but those little holes sometimes can get clogged up. And I typically just take a paper clip and, or a, a staple and I'll straighten it out and you can clean them holes out with a staple or you can use a needle or different things. So put the head assembly back on and you can see the comb sticking out right there. There's a little bit of paint on the head assembly there. And the air is forced around that comb to make the suction to draw the paint. So you just wanna make sure that the paint is not obscuring that area. So we've put the head assembly back on. The next step is your trigger. And your trigger has a hole in it. And that's where your needle passes through the trigger. Right, you see that little slot there. And then on the bottom of the trigger is a little bitty uh, concave hole. And in the trigger assembly down in the airbrush, there's a pin down there. And that pin is how you push the valve down here at the bottom of the airbrush. You, the valve drops and closes to keep the air when you want it. It's how you control the air. So you wanna set that little groove on that pin down in the airbrush. And the way you know you're there is if you push it and it comes back up. I have rarely had to take this part of the airbrush apart. In 25 years, I've only done it once or twice. That part stays pretty sealed and you don't get any, you don't have any problems in there. So our trigger is in place. Now we got to put our guide or our slide or whatever your the company that makes your airbrush calls it. But on this one, some of them, they're not attached to this little metal piece. You have to set that little metal piece down in there. On this one, it's attached. So I like to slide it forward like this you can see it like that and then you kind of put it in behind the trigger see how it comes up in there behind the trigger and then you just rest it there then you put your spring on and then you put your tensioner on now the tensioner uh, this is something that some people adjust to have more or less pressure on their trigger I've always driven it to the front so I have maximum amount of pressure driving my needle back into the cone up front. Some people back it off. Just remember, you can always adjust that pressure on how hard it is to pull that trigger back by changing your uh, tension on that spring in the back. So once you have that piece together, take your needle that you've cleaned, slide it back through there. There's a little piece of paint on there still. Slide that back through there. And don't want to push too hard because if you push too hard, you can flare out the cone. You just, I usually just kind of twist it into place. And once I see it seat, that's where I stop. Then you take your chuck, put the needle chuck on the back that holds it in place. And then you can put your backing piece back on. So that airbrush is clean and ready to shoot again. I know it's still got a little paint on it, but I didn't want to get into the time of cleaning all the outside. But you can feel your brush as soon as you have it in there, how much smooth, smoother it sprays. Now, some people put WD-40 or some oil on the spring. I don't like to do that because I might be spraying uh, automotive and automotive and oil does not work. You'll get fish eyes in your paint. So I typically don't put anything on my spring. Um, you can also use what they call dry lube, which is a graphite you can put on there. But when I start having issues with it, I just clean my brush. All right, this is a double action brush, siphon feed. It's got this hole up here in the front that you draw the paint from. And this brush right here is an Extreme Patriot. Very nice brush. I enjoy using this one a lot. Another Badger airbrush. And this is a cap I keep on the front to protect the front of the brush when I'm not using it. So this brush is the same exact uh, cleaning steps I just went through, except for instead of cleaning the nozzle, you would clean your cup on top. So same thing, you've got your needle up front, you've got your chuck in the back, and you have your backing piece. All the same internal workings are in this brush. Just a little more in-depth when you clean the cup because you don't want to spray your next color. I typically only use these when I'm spraying automotive because I can get finer lines with automotive paint. 
because the solvent uh, continues to reconstitute the paint and doesn't dry in there as much. So that's a, that's a very nice brush also. Another thing I wanted to go over with you guys today, I spoke to you about this um, quick disconnect chuck. I use these a lot. Um, you screw them on the bottom and then you can just pop them on and off of the um, hoses. So instead of sitting there taking the time screwing the brush on, I'm running through maybe multiple brushes or multiple colors or I'm up on a ladder and I need to take this off. I usually just pull that down and it pops right off. Now, if you have a regular hose, and most uh, airbrush lines have something to this effect. I know Iwata does, uh, Pache probably does. But when you're, you can screw that piece right onto the bottom of your brush, or they sell these little doodads that you just screw right into that right there, and it turns your regular hose into a quick disconnect hose. Pretty handy. I just want to show you guys that. The other thing I was wanting to show you, a lot of people talk about paints and how to keep it cheap when you're starting. So I've got these Imagineer paint films. It doesn't really matter what airbrush I'm or airbrush paint I'm using. The important thing is that when I buy airbrush paint, not only do I get the paint, but I got a bottle too. So I buy these uh, they're called fast blast caps. There's lots of different versions of them. The reason I like the fast blast cap is because that piece of plastic is one line through that. So when I'm, when I, my paint begins to dry in there or something, these pipe cleaners will run right through that and you can clean that tubing out really easy. Sometimes when you're spraying with these, now remember, don't throw your bottles away when you're out of paint. Keep those bottles, keep the cap, keep the bottle, because after 10 or 12 bottles of paint, now you have 10 or 12 more bottles to work with. So when you're spraying and you start getting um, either pressure that's spraying out on its own, when you pull it back, you're getting too much paint, or if you're spraying and it starts sucking back in and you're not getting spray, you get like little breaks in your line, there's a little hole on the bottle right here. So when you see that little hole on the bottle, you want to make sure that stays clean. Because as paint is being sucked out of the bottle, it creates a back pressure in here. And if that hole is plugged, it will pressurize your bottle. So just make sure, and like I say, I keep these extra needles around. Just make sure you run a, run a needle in that and open that up. If it gets too dry, you can flip it over and pick off the paint clog from underneath. So... These are called Fast Blast Caps. These are another Badger product. I've been using these for years too. And uh, I use them for a long time. So here's one that I've probably been using for 10 years. I know it doesn't look the prettiest, but it works. Another thing I do when I'm spraying, if I'm spraying and this cap is on here and uh, I'm not gonna use this color anymore, I take that cap off and I throw it in a bucket of water and I put my lid back on. That keeps the paint from drying down in here. And then later on, when you're ready to clean up, you can run your uh, pipe cleaner through a few of these. So those, those are handy for that. Um, another thing that I wanted to go over with you guys today is I hear so many people ask about cheap paint. Most people have some house paint laying around the house, especially for learning. I'll keep Gatorade bottles or any plastic bottle, even glass works, but I typically have plastic around. So I'll take a stir stick and put in about this much paint and then I'll mix it with water. And once I shake it up, I look on my cap and if it's running a little bit thicker than milk or right in that area, that'll spray. So you can take a bottle like this and if you have house paint laying around, just pour some house paint in one of these bottles, mix up some water and you have 16 ounces or eight ounces of paint that you don't have to, to buy, you know, it's pretty cheap that way. Um, a lot of paints settle when you mix water with them. I've got these little mixers. They're, these are made for four ounce bottles. This is another Badger product, you can see. And the two, the, the wire or the rod will actually reach to the bottom of the bottle. And you just turn that on, you mix that up and then you stick it in your bucket, rinse it, and that's done. So those are the basics I wanted to go over with you today. If you have any questions, 
leave them in the comments. Um, I'm happy to answer anything. A lot of these things I overlook because I, I go through them daily, so I don't think about what the basics are. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask and have a great day. If you'd like to see more artwork, please visit our website, orangemoonartstudio.com. And as always, remember to like and subscribe for more videos.